Hey everyone, today I wanted to do a video covering some really important topics when it comes to plants, and that would be overwatering, proper drainage, and pots, like which pots to choose. Um, I find that this is a question that gets asked a lot and there's a lot of confusion surrounding it. Um, and it's, I don't ever find like real, any real good explanations. So I figured I'd just make a video. So the first thing I really want to discuss is drainage. And um, that starts in large part with your soil. Um, most soils right out of the bag are not going to have adequate drainage. They're going to be um, way too dense. They're going to hold a lot of water. Um, and so then your plant is not going to drain efficiently. Uh, so I would highly recommend uh, making your own soil. Start with a nice high quality bagged soil and then um, mix it yourself. Add in things like bark and pumice and make it um, a little bit looser so that water really just drains through it. Again, you kind of want to mix it uh, depending on like which plant you're potting. So for example, this Hoya is going to have a lot looser mix than say a Alocasia. And even this one actually has a little bit denser than most Hoyas because Polynora seems to like a lot more water. So yeah, like this would be an example of a soil I have made up. Um, this is, I started out with, uh, I believe it's Mother Earth or Earth Mother. I always get that one backwards. Um, I started with that soil pre-bagged and it comes out of the bag looking pretty good, but um, I do like to have a little bit more drainage. So I added in pumice and I found some bark chunks that I added into this so that it does have a lot, um, a lot quicker draining. Um, it will dry out faster because it doesn't have as much material to hold the water. Um, which I find most plants to be really appreciative of um, just to have that room for their roots to breathe. The, it, when you make it really light with a lot of gritty pieces, it keeps a lot of air in the soil, which allows the plant's roots to breathe and not be suffocated by um, too dense or soil that gets compacted. One plant that um, I don't generally make the mix myself for, but a lot of people do, is orchids. Um, I just haven't got there yet. I don't have a huge collection of orchids. So um, in this one, I have a black gold orchid mix and just potted it straight up with the mix it has. Um, I find it to be pretty a really good draining mix for your orchids, which have those um, roots for climbing on trees and stuff. Um, to touch on orchids real quick as well, to make sure that they have the adequate dr drainage, you really want to make sure that you're using a pot that has a lot of holes because orchids really like their roots to breathe. So I actually use hydroponic um, net pots and then I use another pot to catch the liquid and it also you know hides your your ugly net pot and that actually perfectly segues into the next part of having proper drainage in your soil and that isn't the soil but it is the pot you choose so um i do find that most ceramic pots have the absolute worst drainage like plants that did great i repotted went into a ceramic pot and immediately i noticed a very sharp decline um, in the plant's health and that really comes down to the fact that they just don't drain so i'll pop this out and you'll see the nursery pot if it'll focus has a lot of holes for the water to come out and that's really what you want but when you have a pot, especially one that has the bottom attached, you can't take that off, there's only somewhere along the bottom is a little tiny hole that that water is supposed to come out of. Meaning that a lot of that water, when you water your plant, 
just gets stuck sitting in the pot and not draining. So I actually pot, I would say 90% of my pots are potted in just cheap nursery pots dropped inside the pretty pot and you can't even see it. To go into pots a little bit more, um, and I kind of touched on this already, how they don't drain very well, the ceramic ones, but I kind of wanted to show you what I'm talking about. So in the bottom of a lot of pots, they have a single drainage hole. Sometimes it's on the side over here. Sometimes it's here. Sometimes they give you two. They put one in both spots. This one has the bottom attached. Um, but what happens is you can see that that hole isn't very big and the depth of that hole isn't very deep either. So what happens is it gets plugged with soil and you, um, you can see how that could be a problem if it gets plugged. I'm trying to get an angle so you can see how really low space there is. It doesn't take long for the bottom underneath here in between these two pieces to get filled up with soil and other debris and then no longer drain. Um, the same goes for like a terracotta pot. It only has a, there's my alocasia, Morocco. Um, in a terracotta pot, it really only has the one drainage hole. So you have where it drains, you know, I guess I can use this pot again for an example. It drains through the hole, but then you have all this space where the water just pools and sits and doesn't go anywhere. And then if that pole gets plugged and it's not draining, then you just have a backup of water. That also leads me into pots without drainage. Um, a lot of people think that if you have a pot that has no drainage, you can add something like rocks or perlite or um, LECA or really anything. Um, I've heard styrofoam packing peanuts and real, I've heard of all kinds of stuff that you can add to the bottom of a pot. But that doesn't work. So what happens is say you fill up the bottom of this pot with no drainage. You fill up the bottom with something like LECA then to here and then you put your soil on top and then you put your plant in there. The water drains out of your soil and it doesn't happen as much in gritty soil, but it drains out of your soil and it's supposed to catch down here where you have all this um, space, but the space is still taken up. So it's still going to fill up with water, only now instead of the water, like say this much of being soggy on the bottom, it's moved up because of the space displacement. But also there's something called the perched water table, which is how much of the water actually comes out of your soil uh, because of gravity. So if you don't have, like if you have that, the leca or pebbles or rocks in here, that doesn't matter if, you know, the bottom inch of your soil is gonna retain water anyway. Um, you know, you're just going to create like a breeding ground for like bacteria and crap. So I'll throw in a little image to show what I'm talking about with the perch water table. Um, that's a whole nother topic that uh, I can get into, but I'll just save that for another video since it can be pretty long winded and sciencey. Uh, so I'll leave that out. Basically, um, pots, even with one drainage hole, if they're, they're just not gonna drain efficiently. So you really want to get yourself some nursery pots. I save all of my nursery pots, uh, much to my husband's dismay. And uh, I just find whichever one fits in the pot I'm trying to use and I drop them in there. I'm constantly switching, playing musical pots. Um, as one plant outgrows a ceramic pot, I'll find a new plant that's, you know, moved into a pot that fits it and just shift everybody around. Um, and it's great because then my plants are always happy because they're draining efficiently. They've got lots of drainage holes. They have nice draining soil and their pot isn't restricting um, 
that water flow. Some um, companies like Costa has gotten wise and they actually sell them in these nice cash pots with no drainage hole, but the plants come in a nice, um, just a little nursery pot. And so your plant looks pretty, looks like it has a pretty pot, but you're getting that nice drainage. Um, although to touch on Costa plants, I would immediately repot them out of whatever Costa had them in um, because it's usually like straight cocoa core and that it just holds so much moisture that you'll rot your roots right off if you water them like um, your normal plants. So I always will repot into, I think you can kind of see in there, a much better looser draining mix. Another thing that I will do is I do have some plants that don't even have a cash pot, um, you know, and there you can get actually some decent little nursery pots that have lots of holes and really good drainage. Um, you can get them on places like Amazon is where I got these ones. And um, I try not to buy too much stuff on Amazon, but sometimes you just can't help it. So these pots are great. I have a lot of my Hoyas in them. They're right about four inches. So they're the perfect size for um, rooting out and establishing some of your plants. And give me just a second while I grab another plant to show you. Another type of pot I like to use, and I actually get them from garden supply stores, would be this one right here. And this is actually just a grower's pot. You can see they have nice big Oops, let me get that in front of the camera. Uh, nice big drainage holes. Look at that. You see a nice big root in there. They go all the way around. If you want more drainage, which I didn't, don't think I did with this one, you can actually drill holes in the bottom just fine and get even more drainage out of the pots, uh, which is really ideal. And they're fairly inexpensive. You can get really large pots for a really good price and, um, you know, they don't look flashy or super pretty, but I also don't think they look bad. Um, just like a flat black, uh, plant. And I mean, let's be honest when you're looking at plants, are we looking at the pot? Or are we looking at the gorgeous leaves? Um, I know me personally, I'm never looking at the pot, always the plant. Um, another thing you can do too is say you see something super cute and you really want to use it as a pot, you can, if the material will allow, you can add holes. So in this one, I actually drilled a bunch of holes in this uh, bucket to turn it into a pot, uh, which currently houses my uh, Hoya Pubicalyx. So, um, you know, really going back to drainage, it really it starts with the soil and having soil that allows the water to freely move through it without holding too much water, but it also is the pot. Um, pot choice is really important. So if you're having problems with a plant, like you just can't figure out what's wrong with it, and you potted that plant up in a ceramic pot, chances are it's not draining efficiently and um, the plant is suffering because of that. It is uh, rotting off roots. And that leads me into overwatering. Um, a lot of people think overwatering is actually the amount of water you use when in reality it's not at all. So um, overwatering is actually down to the drainage of the soil and the frequency in which you water. So um, say you have a plant and it's potted straight in the super, the soil that retains a ton of water, right? And then you put that plant in a place where it's not getting very much light. So it's taking it, you know, three weeks to dry that soil out. Well, that would actually show all indications of overwatering because the plant is not able to use that water in a timely and efficient manner. It's actually going to rot the roots off right off the plant. And you'll see signs like yellowing of the leaves, um, mushing of the stem. You may even see like in Monsteras, for example, I've never seen yellowing leaves. What I've seen is like these burnt edges where the edges start blackening. And those are the first stages of overwatering in Monstera. And if it continues, then that would be, you would start seeing 
like progression of the black, but you would also start seeing yellowing and that would definitely indicate root rot. So, um, overwatering again is really down to how efficiently your soil drains and if your plant is getting enough light um, to utilize that water you've given it. I f the best method for watering your plants would be to water them deeply and then allow them to dry out to whatever their um, requirements are. Some plants don't want to dry out all the way. You still need to let them dry out a little bit, but not like all the way dry. And then some you're gonna let dry out. Like, for example, Hoyas really like um, a lot of air in their roots. So this is a very gritty mix that allows the soil to dry out quickly and efficiently in between each watering. So I let all my Hoyas get a little on the dry side um, before I water them again. Um, because I use such a gritty mix though, I don't, it's not always necessary to let them fully dry out. But um, plants like an alocasia, which I have one in the back, uh, they don't appreciate getting all the way dry, but they do want to dry down a little bit on the surface. So to make sure you're not overwatering, uh, make sure that you have efficient drainage, both in your pot and in your soil, and you have um, you know, your timing right, you're, you're watching your plants to see uh, when they tell you they need water. Like, um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, remember to water your plants by making a schedule. And it's honestly like the worst idea because if you're scheduling your watering, then you're watering everything on the same schedule, which is your schedule, but it's not necessarily the plant schedule on which or on when it needs to be watered. So water your plants when they tell you to or when you can lift up the pot and you can feel that it's light and it needs water. Well, that's all for today. Thank you guys for tuning in to my video on um, choosing the right pot, over watering and proper drainage. Um, as always, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe and comment on my YouTube video. Um, follow me on Facebook as well to stay up to date on um, the newest videos that drop and the blog posts that get released. Um, and if you want, you can also join my emailing list over on the blog at plantbritannica.com. Uh, as always, thank you for tuning in and I hope you have a great day.